Good morning, Fish Heads. Jen Cravasi, Jekyll Bates at Bullshad Studios here in Georgia. And this, this is the first spray session of 2021. I was charged and tasked with putting together a perch pattern for a customer of mine. This is not for Mike. This is for one of my longtime clients, and he has a bunch of other stuff that I need to do too. But for this, since I'm at Bullshad and since this is going to happen anyways, I figured why not film it. He wants a northern perch pattern. I love doing perch patterns. I've done a few in the past, to be honest with you. I think the last one that I did on camera was a year or so ago and it was with the basic opaque if you only have five colors that's one of the patterns you can do because it's pretty much primary colors it's yellow it's red it's black it's white um, but we're going to add a little bit more detail to this one and i'm going to show you how i trick out a northern perch pattern now on this we're going to be kind of y'all are guinea pigs on this and no pun intended for the last one but seriously you guys are going to be like lab rats because um, i have to turn this on this is one of the key ingredients to being able to film in a closed space um, normally i will have a respirator but for the next 20 minutes or so i will be f doing one bait on camera with this let's get this going so I, I have no idea how it's going to sound which is why you guys are all going to be testing hopefully you guys can hear me um, we're gonna find out if I have to do a voiceover then I will certainly do that for you guys now our basic colors for this are going to be yellow red black and white I'm gonna add a little bit of green into this and for the yellow I like to go with a canary yellow it's a little bit darker we're gonna be blending white up into that but I just kind of want to get a soft layer on here as we go along a little bit lighter as we get towards the top because I'm probably going to add some uh, some pearl lime into this as well to give it a little bit more shimmer maybe even a little bit of pearl pineapple which is their yellow pearled color for createx and we have kind of sprayed that out now with the yellow still in the chamber, or at least the residual, I'm going to add some white back into that because we're going to soften this yellow as we get towards the belly, which kind of gives it, at least in my opinion, a little bit more of a natural look. I'm also going to shoot it in an angle. Now the scales on this particular bull shad are a little bit finer than you get on some of them. Kind of randomize this as we go but i'm still going to shoot it at an angle which is going to catch a little bit of the edges of these scales but we still we kind of want to soften this as we go and i'm going to kind of add some pearls in here as well I'll probably shoot some pearl white and then finish out this white back on top there we go just a nice soft yellow with a little bit of white over top of it. On this pearl lime, it's a green color, but it's got a lot of yellow in it. It's like almost like a yellow green, and you can really see that coming through on the inside of this bottle. But I'm gonna hit just the top third of this with this pearl lime. And then I'm going to put a little bit of a darker, almost a moss green at the very top of this. Now, a lot of you guys have been asking some really good questions, but some questions that I think probably warrant an answer. The number one question I've gotten in the last few weeks since I announced that I was coming to Georgia to work with Mike uh, is whether or not there's still going to be a Jekyll Bates. Yes, absolutely there is. Mike wouldn't have it any other way. Reason being, Mike is more of a collaborative partner for me and with me. Uh, he's not a boss per se. I'm not on his payroll. He's not on my payroll. We've just decided that uh, collaboration makes the most sense. He's looking for an in-house painter. I'm looking for, you know, broader horizons. Obviously, as you move in a career, you want to move up. 
and uh, when he asked me to come on board as his in-house painter, he asked, you know, and, and mentioned right away that this certainly was not going to be a, I work for him and that's it. He wants Jekyll Base to continue. He wants me to flourish as an individual uh, artist as well as a collaborative partner for him. So I absolutely, it was, there was no hesitation at all on pulling the trigger to come here. It certainly was the right thing to do. I'm very humbled that he has confidence in my skill as an airbrush artist. And uh, I'm just generally happy to be here. I am a couple of weeks further back in my queue line for my orders because I obviously had to pack myself, move myself. And that took about three and a half, probably four weeks. I was still pushing orders through well into December, so I did the very best I could. I think my last spray day was December 23rd or December 24th. I think I worked on Christmas Eve. So there was a lot of moving pieces and parts. Um, this is a moss green that I'm adding into this. And you guys, we're, we're still waiting. And I, I just couldn't wait any longer. I've missed you guys so much. Um, and I need to keep that, that YouTube machine going as well. Uh, but I couldn't wait any longer to give you guys a spray session. I miss doing them. I miss being creative and seeing the stuff that you come up with. But I know my lighting is not ideal. I've got backlit lighting from above. I'm still waiting on the studio lights to get here. They're supposed to be installed. Uh, but I don't have a date. So there's just, there's a lot still going on that uh, kind of out of my hands. So as soon as I have the studio lighting here, um, it's, it's going to be professionally installed above me, then we'll have a much better quality of video. But um, I've, I've held off as long as I can. I absolutely need to start making video for you guys, and, and for me too. It's, uh, it certainly brightens my day when I get to share something that I've done with all of you and watch you create it as well in your own way. So we've got some moss green, we have some pearl lime green. Let me see if I can pull this under the light. And again, I apologize. This is not ideal studio lighting. Um, really all I have is this top light right here. So apologies. Now on this, I do have everything set up to the right, whereas in the garage, everything was over on the left. So that's a little bit of getting used to. Um, it, it's actually easier for me because I'm right-handed primarily. I can spray with both hands, but it was actually easier over here, but there's no outlet over here that I can utilize. Uh, there is on this side of the room. Just add a little bit of red there. I've got my pressure around 15 right now. I'm just going to add, and I could have done a cutout for that, but gotten fairly decent at controlling the spray and the overspray. Get that there on here. This side of the dorsal fin. Come back over the top just a little bit. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of red into the tail. And yeah, this is eventually going to come off. Uh, we obviously don't clear the tails on bull shad because they are hair tails. And yeah, this is the, the fish will knock this off after a while, but it doesn't do any harm to have it here. It doesn't affect how this swims, doesn't stiffen it too much. This puts a really nice pearl sheen, absent of any color. It's a neutral, just a pearlescent color. And it really, it doesn't really give it a chrome effect, but it does give it a nice pop sheen. It really enhances the colors that are already in this. We're gonna let that dry. Just added a little bit of detail, black magenta. I wanna bring my pressure down to about 15. Make sure I have a good flow. I'm going to add just a little bit here. 
to the top, the edges of this, on the other side here, and also on these gills, on the gill cheeks here, just to add a little bit of definition into this cheek area. Run that. And get your airbrush as close as you can. That way you have a nice area of definition. Complete that underneath. And then add just a tiny bit to the back here. Just to darken that up a little bit. Now we're going to be adding in the perch stripe. Usually perch have five to seven that are visible. Running vertically down the backs. But as you can see, we are starting to take on a little bit more definition, depth to it. We're going to darken this a little bit in the middle. I'm going to add some jet black. It's a wicked detail color. About six drops. Bring my pressure back down. Now we're going to look for the piece that I commonly use. Eventually. I'm going to start above this peck fin. Normally what I'll do is, actually I'm going to bring this down a little bit. I'll do one side of the stripe going down and then I'll turn around and do it coming back the other way. That is going to be the same here today. Go ahead and do seven, which means I'll do two per. doing is real low pressure down the back of this. There. Six will work. I think six makes more sense. Because I have a much shorter segment on the tail. And then coming back, I'm just going to use my hand to stabilize everything. Do the whole thing coming all the way back down. Might kind of enhance this as I go. There we go, just kind of move that around until I have something that looks decent and makes sense for the pattern. Now we have those real pretty stripes. We're not done with them. One of the things that's going to be put into this is just a little bit of scaling. Real light. We want to make sure we follow that line up. And you can see that that enhances quite a bit. And then while we're on this side, we're going to do just a little bit of 
random scaling. Belly. Because if you'll notice, if you guys have caught perch or you're looking at perch, they do have little black scale pieces that kind of pop out on the bait. And I'm, I'm moving this around to try and get good light. And again, I apologize in advance. I know the lighting is not what you guys are used to with me. We're trying to get that worked out. As soon as I have that better lighting, you'll see a lot more frequent spray sessions. And to be honest, that kind of has been a bit of a hold up, uh, but it's, uh, it's been a while. And before I get too rusty at spray sessions for you guys, I figured I might as well go ahead and pull the trigger on this one. It's a fairly easy pattern, I would say on a scale of one to 10, it's probably a four. And then just keep going down. There we go. Try not to get too dark. Generally don't use a whole lot of black black anymore, like the actual jet black or opaque black, only because there are so few fish that it really shows up on in real life. And we're just gonna turn this, my hand in a place where that makes sense. Do the other side of this. Just try and get that going all the way up. Now I'm also, we're not done with layering either. Um, that the black scaling that I just kind of randomized is not going to be the only scaling that we use. In fact, we're going to add some white into that as well. go back to this and this is uh, Anarchy Model UK stencil it is from Brian and if you go to Anarchy UK or Anar Anarchy Model stencil UK you will be able to find it there under the creature feature stencils doing is I'm throwing a little bit of stenciling into these vertical lines and then I'm going to come back down the bait just a little bit here and a little bit there give it the appearance of a more natural pattern And then we're also going to go down the top. Just run one line, one line, and one line. I have got some white loaded back into the chamber. The first thing I'm going to do is with this modeled scaling pattern. I'm going to hit the cheeks with just a little bit of these white dots. Also going to hit the belly. All the way down the bait. Flip it over to the same thing on the other side. Just want to add a little bit more depth into this. 
the more depth you have in a pattern, the better off you're going to be pulling off a match the hatch. You want to try and get this as natural looking as you can. same scale that we did this random black with, I'm going to come back and do some white as well. Just a bit here and there. Get it as random as we can. And again, I, I really, really hope you guys can see this. I am going to show it to you in good light. before I go to clear coat. Flip this over and do the same thing. Just to kind of mix up with this black in here. Last but not least, I'm going to add just a little fluorescent. This is a sunburst. It's lighter than the fluorescent orange. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but a lot of times, especially on perch, you'll see mixed in with the red, a little bit of that lighter orange color. So we're going to go to the throat on this. Add just a little bit into the throat and a couple of spots back here by the tail. Bring it up the sides just a little bit. Just a couple areas where we've put white over top. just to give it a little bit of pop. Into the cheeks a little. All right, now we are cooking with fire. There. On that side, I'd say we're getting pretty close here. You will notice that I have not heat set at all. You guys always ask me that. Have you heat set? Nope. This is a straight shoot, layer over layer, kind of a wet on wet. I am done shooting paint. So I was able to turn off that fan. It's a uh, two, I want to say it's 280 CFM. So it's fairly powerful. As long as I shoot into a pretty specific spot, it's pretty good. One of the things that I want to do here is dress out these peck fins. Now you guys see me do this a lot, but I think that it really enhances quite a bit if you do a little extra detail on these pectoral fins. It just looks good, in my opinion. The other thing is that this lighting, like the whole, I'm just getting used to it. We'll get better as we go in this studio. Like this is kind of set up backwards too. Being right-handed, it's hard when my power source is over here and I'm throwing a shadow onto what I'm working on. But like I said, we'll get there, we'll get there. The studio space is really good. Um, I'm very excited about it. I just need to tweak it a little bit more to get it to where you guys can see what I'm doing. And I can't put my overhead cam in 
my top down view until the lighting is done. So hopefully that's going to happen in the next week or so. I don't have a timeline. I wasn't given a timeline. All I can hope and pray for is that it happens soon. Because I know that you guys watching these spray sessions, this is the stuff you like to see best on the channel. It's the stuff that I like to do the most of on this channel. So we will get there. Now, you can see, got that on there. We're going to put some natural eyes. Perch have a yellowish red eye. And for that, I think I'm going to be using the Living Eyes, the Fish Skulls Living Eyes Fire Color on that. Actually do just a little bit. You guys can see that. I know I'm throwing a shadow on my work. Just a little bit of detailing. So on this one, we are adding the Fish Skulls Living Eyes Fire, which is an orangish red eye. It's fairly natural for these perch. This is a 10 millimeter. I'm just going to drop it right in and press it down. And get our super glue good to go on the other side. Drop that and get it all groovy and happy. So I know I'm going to get lots of comments. Yes, I know I'm throwing shadows on my bait. It's the only place where I can have a light. And it's set up for the time being until I get proper lighting in the studio. Um, we're working on it, folks. Just bear with me. Please, please, please. I appreciate your continued patronage and your kindness. I have really, really missed making some vids for you guys. I love doing it for you. You guys are the best fans in the world. And I love it when you create with me. I'm going to try and walk around uh, the studio as best I can and find some good light for you guys so that you can see this. I might just do a still shot and uh, edit that in in post-production. But this is the Northern Perch. It is a yellow with a little bit of white on the belly, a darker moss green on top, just a bit of black magenta to define these gill plates and the edges of our peck fins. I put some red on the tail. The colors I used were the opaque white for primer and also for the after spray on the scaling. I used uh, sunrise yellow, which is a little bit darker than the bright yellow or canary yellow. I used pearl lime on the top third of this and shot over that with a moss green. After that, we came through with a solid black and did our vertical striping on this perch. I did six per side, one, two, two, one, one, two, two, one, and then added in the red detailing because perch have got red pecs, red dorsals, and a red tail. A little bit of fluorescent sunburst on the throat and just in a few pops, give that bait some character and put the eyes on there. Now we are going to bathe this in the KBS. When I say bathe, I don't really mean that. Don't take that literally. I brush on my KBS. You guys have seen me do it. I can link those videos below for you guys. Thank you. It's good to see you again. I've really missed you and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.